Thanks, Alex. That was a very good introduction. Um, so today I'm, I'm doing a, a basic talk on how you get into using the uh, databases on the um, uh, National Digital Research Infrastructure, so formerly known as Compute Canada. Um, my name is Gemma Hode. Um, like Alex said, I, I work as a database administrator and a bioinformatician at Simon Fraser University. Um, and I work uh, with uh, the Bioinformatics National Team too. So I'm just going to take you through how to get in there, how to use the system and uh, a few details about it too. So, okay. So um, what do we have available? What database types do we have available? Um, how to get a database account and access your databases and database as a service, um, I want to mention at the end there. So currently we have two systems that you can use. If you're using CEDA, we have a MariaDB instance and a PostgreSQL instance too. And Graham has just a MariaDB instance. Um, you may have a preference which database you want to use. Uh, the benefit of using Postgres is that it comes with lots of uh, extensions that we can add on for you on request. So here I've put examples of PostGIS. And uh, that's an extension that allows you to work with location data. So um, you might have coordinates in your data and it'll allow you to manipulate calculate uh, distances, uh, locations more easily um, using those extensions. So, okay, how to get a database account in the first place? Uh, you have to email some details to support at tech.alliancecan.ca. So that's your uh, Compute Canada username. Uh, so like for instance, Jay Smith, uh, mine is G Hode. Um, and then you have to request what type of database you want and where you want it. So I want to use CEDA and I want to use MySQL. Uh, a, a database will be set up for you then, uh, an account that you can actually use to, to create your, your uh, data in. Um, you need to let us know the amount of storage um, you require as well, because if you're needing hundreds of gigabytes of data, that will actually impact other users who are using the system. So um, we might have better solutions for you if you have tons of data. Um, if you have small amounts of data, you know, that's just fine. You can create as many databases as you want, and that's not a problem. Um, and for Postgres, again, you need to, uh, you have to let us know what version of the extension that you need. Um, the reason I mention this is because uh, we are planning on updating the uh, MySQL, MySQL and the Postgres versions to, to newer versions within the next couple of months. For existing researchers, this will mean uh, a little downtime and a little bit of testing to make sure uh, their data still works before we actually uh, finally uh, push the new um, versions of the databases into production. The thing is, if you're using, for instance, post-GIS extensions, um, we have to put new versions of those along with the new version of the database. So there could be slight changes there, and uh, we're not quite aware of what those are at the moment. So again, we'll be slowly rolling these out and making sure everything is working correctly. So one thing to note is that the MySQL and Postgres databases that we have are only available inside the cluster. You can't access them outside because they use internal IP addresses. However, if you do need to access this data from outside the cluster, you can let us know at the email address here. Um, at the moment, you know, you, you might be forced to kind of dump your data on the cluster, copy it off the cluster and potentially um, use a database that you have outside the cluster to reload the data. But, you know, there may be other ways that we can help you do that. So 
My sequel. So firstly, my sequel, um, we actually use MariaDB. And the difference between my sequel and MariaDB, if you don't already know, is that MariaDB branched off as an open source project from my sequel in 2008. And that's when Sun Microsystems bought the MySQL um, product. Um, MariaDB uh, has been um, continually developed since then as a separate project. Uh, it's completely open source. Um, I believe Oracle, you know, just after that, um, micro, uh, Sun Microsystems bought um uh, my sequel, it um, Oracle overtook uh, the company um, of Sun Microsystems, so it's all owned by micro, um, by Oracle now. But uh, what we have is is a free open source version, and it will remain open source. So this is how you access your database instance. So after emailing support, um, they add this. Uh, file into your home directory, which will allow you to directly access uh, your data without using a username and password. So in the way that we use this, I'm just going to go over and uh, show you in the terminal. So uh, first of all, we need to go module, load, Maria, DB. And this will allow you to access your database. If you were to do this, it shows you the, the version of the client that you're using, but the version of the database is actually 10.4 here. The client version is 10.6, but that's okay because it's backwards compatible. So within here, we can um, access the database as such. So um, we can go in. And if I have a look in here, so this will enter you into the, uh, like I said, the MariaDB 10.4 version, and we can have a look to see what we have in here. So show databases, and it shows what we have here already. I've already got a database called Gehode Hello World. So let's create a quick database and show you how this works. Um, so I can copy this. Yeah. This is going to throw an error, which I'll show you. And the reason that has showed an error is because there's a constraint on the database name and you have to prefix it with your own um, username. So if I was to go in here, change this to Gehode, then that would work. I can go show databases. Yeah. And it shows my new database here. So in order to move into this database, I'll do this. And I, will, I can look at the tables. There won't be any in there yet because it's newly created. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste this in. Copy paste to create my new database and right show tables now I can see my database in there okay and I can describe that table so you can see it's there it's got no data in it at the end of course but uh, there you go so we can share databases with other users so other researchers in the group um, so in order to do that, you can uh, create a statement like this. Let me move this in. Oops, second. So if I have a friend that I want to share my data with and access to my database, up. we can Write something like this. Uh, at the moment, I'm granting them select, insert, update, privileges. Let's be careful what we need. Um, let me go back in. So 
select or with you whatever privileges you want on my table on employees to you can write in your name of this other person that you are giving access to also must have a database account otherwise this will not work at 172. Anything. Okay. So that will allow them to access the employees table that you have just created. Um, you can also remove that access by using the revoke command too. So um, revoke. Okay, select on. Employees from. Let's get this wrong. Let's write two. It throws an error, but from. Okay, and you've taken access away. So this is how you can give them grant, um, give them revoke access to um, people in your lab, for instance. So that is, uh, that's all the details about MySQL. I'll, I'll show you how to do it in Postgres too. So PostgreSQL is also a relational management database system. Um, currently, we're on version four, sorry, 10 of this. Uh, we are upgrading soon to version 15, uh, as I mentioned, um, but at the moment, let me show you how to get into here. So again, you have to provide those same details to uh, the support email address. You have to give them your Compute Canada username, and you also have to give them, um, you know, the fact that you want a PostgreSQL database and there is only one on CEDA. So we have to load the module first in order to get this working. If we didn't type this, it, it just lets you know. I'll show you. Just if I was to, to write this without any, if it has no knowledge of what it is, it, it kind of, you know, stops to guess and you can go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll help that. I'll use that module instead. And it'll run the command as that. But if I was to run the command again, it would ask me the same question. So in order to stop it asking you that same question, what are you trying to use here? You can just use the module load. Okay, and then it will uh, yeah, type in different commands. So in order to get into the Postgres, you need to know your database name and your database name by default is going to be your username underscore DB. You can request that you have your database of a certain name. Um, Postgres is a little different than MySQL. In MySQL, you get a user account and within a user account, you can create different databases as many as you like. Uh, but within Postgres, uh, a database is created with you uh, for you, and you have to uh, you can create tables within it. But if you want an additional database, then you have to request that through the support email. So if I type this, it will show me what's in my database, so I can have a look at the tables that are in there. So I have some tables in there too. Um, I've also created another database um, by requesting that, so I can. Um, get into that database too by using slash C. And I can have a look at the tables there too. But no tables in that one. So, yeah, okay. So we're doing something very similar to what we did in MySQL here. We're going to create a table. No need to create the database here. So let's go to table. And then if we run that DT and again, you can see the table's been created. 
So sharing your database here. Um, so log into the database again. Um, you can run these commands. So, um, so you can grant, connect, allow somebody to connect. Um, data base. Um, key hold three, two, two. My friend, Atta. I can give in access, and likewise, I can revoke access in the same way as I did before. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, then Atta should be able to to go in, and he should be able to connect to that using the slash c notation that I've written here, so he can change to the different database from within his login to Postgres. Okay. So finally, uh, I'll mention databases as a service. Um, so like I said, if you have a lot of uh, data uh, data that you want to store, you can um, we can create a different instance for you um, and you'll have you know better control over there than the instance that's shared by everyone else, either of Postgres or of uh, MariaDB. So um, just, you know, Email us, let us know what you want and what kind of size data that you have, and we can set that, set that up for you. We are moving towards a, a self-service model, um, which will allow a different kind of deployment of uh, managed databases in the cloud. That is something that we're working on right now, along with upgrading the MySQL, uh, MariaDB, uh, and Postgres to newer versions. Um, the newer versions um, will have better security and they will work faster. Uh, but there will be some kind of, you know, maybe a little bit of testing that you need to do in your code. I found, like, for instance, when we moved from, um, I'm not sure if it was uh, MariaDB version 10.2 to 10.4, uh, sorry, 10.5, uh, there were some issues with, um, constraints in MariaDB in that before it wasn't, you know, forcing the constraints, you could add a value, uh, sorry, have a, a null value in a not null column, for instance. And when moving to the newer version, it was not allowing it, that anymore. So it does, I'm finding that the newer versions do require better data integrity uh, of, of your applications and how they access uh, the database. So that's that's pretty much everything. Um, I want to let you know that we do have a lot of information on this, which is very much um, you know padded out version of what I've spoken about this morning um, on on this site here in the uh, the alliances docs section. So if you were just to search for databases, it would find that. And that is everything. So uh, thank you very much.